on Christ the solid rock we stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Well, we welcome you here to Christ Community Church with our online service and want to encourage you today that, that God loves you, he is for you, he is not against you, and he seeks to have a, a relationship with you, and God is good all the time. Let me hear you say it, God is good all the time, that's right, all the time. We're happy that you, you're here with us today, so as we worship together through expositing the word, we're going to take a look at all kinds of different things today that I think that are going to be really helpful in this time of trouble. Uh, just a few uh, announcements first. Uh, many of you tuned into Sunday School, and if you're not tuning into Sunday School, do yourself a favor and tune into Sunday School every Sunday at 9 a.m. You'll get a lot out of it. Jeff does a really good job, except today when he said all kinds of stuff about me needing new jokes and whatnot. Jeff, to you, I would say, don't quit your day job. I've seen better jabs at people in a boxing match. All right, folks. So uh, <laughs> uh, it's all in fun. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I probably do need some better jokes and whatnot. But, uh, but Jeff, yeah, I appreciate your your kind encouragement of uh, trying to get better jokes into my sermons. Um, so anyway, I will work on that. But in the meantime, as I said, don't quit your day job, okay? <laughs> All right. Well, as we, uh, as we continue on, families, uh, heads of families, get your communion ready because later on, right after the, the message, we are going to be having family communion. And uh, so if you don't have grape juice or a cracker, uh, get something that's comparable. Uh, you can use just about anything that you want. The, the point is, is the state of your heart towards God, right? And so we want you to be able to join in communion with us a little bit later today. So get your communion ready. Go get that right now. <clears throat> now, real important, a <clears throat> couple real important uh, announcements to make before we get into the message. Um, as you know, or you should know, we have all kinds of stuff going on throughout the week. Um, throughout the week, we have all kinds of online teachings. We have archive messages. Uh, we have, I mean, just the list goes on and on. And so I want you to be able to uh, just tune into Facebook all throughout the week and see what is available. We have everything available from kids ministry to uh, of course, adult Sunday school, uh, women, men's ministries, things like that. So tune in for that. Now, every Wednesday, this church sets, us, sets aside a time to pray corporately together. And we usually do that online. Um, but last Wednesday, we did our uh, drive-by prayer where we went all around uh, Delroy and we went into different parts of Carrollton and we prayed over the different places like the uh, first responders, uh, retirement homes, and ended up at uh, Carrollton High School praying over that. And we prayed all the way through as we go. And people have really gotten a lot out of that. Well, this week, this week, hear me clearly on this, this week we're not going to have the well, which is our prayer ministry, on Wednesday. Instead, we're going to have it on Thursday. Here's the reason why. Because Thursday is the National Day of Prayer. And so what we're going to do is we're going to gather at Christ Community Church's campus, and we're going to gather in the parking lot at 7 o'clock this Thursday. And so I want you to as you come in, I want you to park your cars and trucks, whatever you have, all around the parking lot. And that way we can gather together with a safe six-foot distance right in the middle of the parking lot. I think that will give us plenty of room. So at 7 o'clock on Thursday, drive your cars into the parking lot, park on the very edge of the parking lot, and then we'll all get together and pray. 
and the weather is supposed to be amazing from what I understand. And so I'd love for you to join me with that. And church, honestly, the National Day of Prayer, if you can't make it out to that and you're doing nothing else but watching TV or scrolling through your smart device, come on. Church, we need to come on out. We need to pray together, right? So I want you to mark that in your calendar, 7 o'clock on Thursday. Join me here for prayer, and we will go ahead and pray for all the needs of the community, the needs of the church, and the needs of our nation, and the needs of our world. We need it right now more than ever. All right. Well, with that, let's go ahead and get into our message today. As you know, if you've been following along with us, we've been going through a series of mess or a series called Rock Solid During Times of Trouble. Rock Solid During Times of Trouble. And we, we looked at the, the topic of, of knowing how to respond during times of trouble. We've, went, we've gone through uh, seeing as God sees during times of trouble and being rock solid in those two categories of knowing and seeing. And this week we're going to be rock solid. We're going to learn how to be rock solid with what we hear, with what we hear when I hear what God says. So join me in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, I, I do ask that you would bless this time with your, uh, with your blessing. Open up minds and hearts to receive those who have been drawn to this message, who maybe don't even have a relationship with you or are far off from you as that they wouldn't be weighed down with uh, false guilt or shame, but that they would be encouraged to seek you out. Father, I ask that your anointing would be on this message and that you would help me to speak clearly. I cannot speak anything of myself, and so I need your spirit. So Holy Spirit, I ask that you would work through me in these next few minutes. And we give all the praise and honor and glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we're going to hear what God says. What does God say? In 1939, The Wizard of Oz, many of you, I'm sure all of you remember this movie, The Wizard of Oz. In 1939, it was released. And when it was released, it was an amazing feat, uh, technically, because it, it brought uh, color into the theaters. And people hadn't seen anything like that. And it, and it was done in such a, in an amazing way. And all the writers got together and the actors got together and all these different cogs in this giant machine all worked together in The Wizard of Oz. And it just really, it, it turned Hollywood on its, on its head because nobody had ever seen anything quite like that. And, and what it did is it, is it gave a different perspective and it shows us the amazing power of perspective when, when something is written out clearly to where we can understand it clearly. And, and this movie did so much of that. Well, here's the kicker for that, is that in 1939, when it was released, it didn't get that much of, of, a, of an audience. It was critically acclaimed, but they didn't even make a profit on it until 10 years later in 1949, when it was re-released. And sometimes, bringing it to where we're at today, sometimes, just like that movie, God's word needs to be re-released in our lives because the fact is we are all expert at, experts at sinning. Every single one of us are experts at sinning. What we're not experts at is living out God's word. We mess up from time to time. We, we make mistakes. And we look at God's word, we, we, we read it, we drink it in, and then we, we, we make that commitment to God. And then what happens a month later, a few weeks later, a few days later, sometimes minutes later, we go back to what we were doing before. And, and that's why it's so important 
for us to get a perspective that's not our perspective, but God's perspective on life, especially during a time of trouble. I think you'd agree with that. We need God's perspective, and we need his word to be re-released into our lives every day, every day, to get that fresh perspective, especially during a time of, of trouble. And so that's what God's word does for us. It gives us a fresh perspective. In Matthew 7, chapter 7, verses 24 through 27, it says this, that everyone... Jesus is saying this. Now he's speaking about the, the word, and he says this, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it so basically what Jesus is saying here is that people you and I together if we build our lives our house on the solid rock of God's word, of Jesus Christ, if we build our house on his solid word, on his solid rock, when the rains do come, when the floods come, when the wind comes, we're going to be able to be steady and have a sure foundation. And we won't have to worry about the storms of life. Concerned? Yes. We're all concerned during the storms of life. But worried? No, because we know who's in control. But for those who build their, their houses on sand, whether it be uh, self-thought apart from God, whether it be I've got this on my own apart from God, or the wisdom of others apart from God, anything else apart from God, God Jesus himself says that's sinking sand. It's sinking sand. And when we build our house, our lives, on the rock, when the storm comes, we're going to be able to withstand that storm. That makes perfect sense, and Jesus is teaching us here in this, in Matthew 7, chapter, chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. So as we're standing on solid rock, we know that we're going to have a firm foundation to go on in life and to, to be able to deal with the storms of life as they come. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to do five different things. We're going to tackle five subjects, five subjects on hearing what God says during times of trouble. First off, we're going to learn how to weed through what's said. We're going to be able to test what's said during a time of trouble. Three, we're going to be able to know what God gives us when he speaks to us, because God gives us. A lot of things when he speaks to us we're gonna learn about how God speaks and then the plan of action when we don't do what God says because like I said before we are expert at sinning we are experts at sinning and so we're gonna have five different topics that we're gonna cover and I think by the end of the day it's gonna give us again a fresh perspective on building our lives on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. Now, let's tackle this first one first. It's, it's the weeding through what's said. We, we hear a, a lot of bad press during a time of trouble. And we need to weed through it. We need to weed through the garbage of what's said. Because whenever trouble comes, a lot of chaos comes with it. When a lot of chaos comes... People are reactionary. They don't necessarily respond. Respond means I'm going to take a little bit. A little bit. I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to pray on it. I'm going to filter it through my mind. I'm going to ask God what what He has to say about it. So often people are reactionary and they gather things together and then they immediately knee jerk reaction when times of trouble come. 
and that adds to the chaos. It's like putting fuel on a fire. We've all seen that during a time of trouble. Maybe you and I have failed in those areas when it comes to a time of trouble. What we need to do is we need to weed through all the garbage, and we do that with the Word of God. Now, sometimes in the midst of chaos, ideas, thoughts, and whatnot are going to come to us that make us uncomfortable. But just because it makes us uncomfortable does not mean it's there to hurt us. Sometimes the most uncomfortable things are there to help us to grow. So we weed through the garbage, and, and some of the garbage-like things that we could hear are things that are bad, unprofitable, they're negative, a bunch of naysayers speaking non-faith. Uh, some of the things that we hear during times of trouble are untrue, they're confusing, they're damaging, and so all these different things come in like a whirlwind on our lives, and we're left going, what, what do we do now? What do we do now? It's like the, some of the political pundits that we see on TV so often who are arguing, and there's a cacophony of, of all kinds of verbal arguments and backlashes against one another. You've seen that before. This side is saying this, that side is saying that, and it's just so polarized, and they're speaking over one another, and you can't understand anything that you need to do in a time of trouble. And whenever, whenever there's that type of thing, where's the plan of action in a time of trouble? Are we just going to complain, or are we actually going to have a plan of action in the midst of a time of trouble? So we as Christians, we need to be able to weed through all of that garbage. One of the best ways to do it is, is looking at this, this time of trouble, whatever this time of trouble is in your life, as a, as a glass that's filled up halfway. Is it half empty or is it half full? I think the way that the Bible takes a look at the glass that's got half of it filled with water is like this. Yeah, it's filled halfway with water, but the reality is, as we trust in God, we can see that thing fill up. And that's not so much an optimist view or a pessimist view, but it's a reality view. It's a reality view saying, yes, right now we're at half of a glass, but we're going to trust God to see that rise. It's called having faith. And so during a time of trouble, we need to weed through all of the garbage and look at it from a fresh perspective of what God's Word has to say. The next thing that we need to do during a time of trouble, we need to be able to test all things through God's Word. We need to be able to test all things through God's Word. And what God says will never go against His Word. Everything that God says will always be grounded and rooted in his word. So during a time of trouble, we not only need to weed through the garbage, but we also need to test the information. We need to test the information. And we do that by comparing what information is out there with what does God's word say. What does God's word say? And we take that time, we pray it through. And then we're able to discern what's right, what's wrong, what the right way is to go about it, and what the wrong way is to go about it. And we go forward by faith in that manner. During times of trouble, when I hear what God says, I am complete and I am equipped. God's not just going to put you in a situation or allow you to be in a situation and then leave you alone. No, no. God is better than that. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 says this, All scripture, scripture meaning his word, his Bible, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God or the woman of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So during times of trouble, when I hear what God says, I am complete and equipped. This means that his word is profitable for me. 
it's profitable for me. I am on the increase. I am gaining. And not only is it profitable for me and for you, it's profitable for us, but we get taught. During a time of trouble, I am complete and equipped because I get taught. We get taught. During a time of trouble, I'm complete and I am equipped because during that time, I get reproved. The Bible says that we get reproved. It says that all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof. I get reproof. That means rebuked. Beloved, listen. None of us wants to hear the truth when it rubs us the wrong way. Not one of us do, does. It's painful. It hurts. But it's good for us. When somebody is speaking the truth to us and it hurts, here's what we do. We drink it in. We pray about it. We test it against God's word. And we look at it and we say, okay, there's room for improvement in my life. Because not one of us have it all together 100% of the time. We all need improvement. All of us. I need improvement. You need improvement. We all need improvement together. And so the word of God is there to help us get taught and to reprove us. And then also, I get corrected. The, this verse says that it's good for correction to put us back on the right path. Here's the right way to go. And when God comes to you and, and lets you know, here's something that's wrong in your life. Like I said, he's not just going to leave us and he's not going to condemn us. He's going to say, oh, we need to make a course correction here or there. So he's here to correct us. And we also get trained to live right in the ways of God. We also get trained during a time of trouble. We get trained. The time of trouble is a great training ground. You can testify with me that during the time of, uh, time of trouble, you learn and you gain more about who God is and your relationship with God more so in a time of trouble than you ever could have during a time of peace in your life. That's the truth. When we go through times of trouble, it's a time of growth. It's a time of pruning. It's a time where God shaves this off and then adds this to your life. So during a time of trouble, we are complete and we are equipped. And here's the reason. So that I can be, and you can be, so that we can be completely fitted for the task, and it means that we have the tools for the job. That's where this verse 17, it says that the person of God may complete, equipped for every good work. During a time of trouble, that we can be complete and equipped for every good work. That means that we're completely fitted for the task at hand, Ladies and gentlemen, during a time of trouble, if you're a child of God, you're completely fitted for that task. God has specifically used you during that task, during that time of trouble. Out of all the people in all the world and all of time, he has chosen you to walk through that time of trouble. You. God has favor on you. And he has also given us tools for the job to complete what the task is. And so during a time of trouble, it's not all bad news. Remember, we need to weed through the garbage, we need to test all things, and then during a time of trouble, we need to know that when God is speaking, he is speaking life into our lives, and that we are complete and equipped for every task. Also during a time of trouble, when I hear what God says, I am given two different things. I am given truth, and I'm given information about future things. Like future things? What do you mean? First off, let's cover truth. During times of trouble, when I hear what God says, when God is speaking to us, here's what we're given. We're given truth. We're given truth. John 16, 13 says this. When the spirit of truth comes, and that's the Holy Spirit, Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all 
the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare it to you, the things that are to come. So not only is God going to give you truth, he's not going to lie to you. He's not going to give you a half-truth. He's not going to do anything, but he's going to give you the whole truth, unvarnished, the whole truth. The whole truth. And not only that, but he's going to give you information about future things. John 16, 13 at the end says, And he will declare to you the things that are to come. Sometimes God gives us a prompting on the inside. Because when we get saved, when we become born again, the Holy Spirit takes residence in us. He lives in us. The Bible says that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is God. So God comes to take re residence in us. He lives in us. He's at home in us. And while he's there, he is speaking things that he hears from the Father to us. And very often, <clears throat> along with that truth, very often, sometimes he'll, he'll give us a prompting of things that will, will come. Some people will call that a gut feeling, but if you're a Christian... We need to be listening to the voice of God. We need to be listening to the voice of God. We're going to get into that a little bit later, but we need to be listening to the voice of God because so often, sometimes God will say something to us that makes us aware, hey, go into that place. And there may be nothing wrong with that place, but he says, don't go into that place. You've heard the stories about about uh, people who have avoided an accident when they turned left when they could have turned right. God is speaking. God is speaking to us during a time of trouble, not just during good times, not during just neutral times. God is speaking to us during a time of trouble. So during a time of trouble, when I hear what God says, I'm given truth. And that helps us to cut through all the lies. And I'm given information about future things. Proverbs 25, 2 says this, it is the glory of God to conceal things. He's not going to tell us everything. But the glory of kings is to search things out. And as we're developing our relationship with God and we're hearing what he has to say, we're following those promptings of what he is saying. In Isaiah 42, uh, verse 9, in Isaiah 44, verse 7, in Isaiah 46, 10, it talks about God speaking to us and letting us know about future things. So it's not so mystical, but it is God working through his children, having that relationship with us, making us privy to some of the things that he has chosen not to conceal, but to us. His love spans wider than we could ever imagine, and his favor is on his church. So during times of trouble, when I, when I hear what God says, I'm complete and I'm equipped and I'm given truth and knowledge about future things. And also when I hear what God says during a time of trouble, I am encouraged, I am built up, I am consoled. The Bible says this. In 1 Corinthians 14, 3, it says, On the other hand, the one who prophesies or speaks the word of God speaks to people for their upbuilding and encouragement and consolation. So when God is speaking through people, when he speaks through his word, he is speaking a word of affirmation. He is speaking a word of building you up. He is speaking a word of encouragement. He wants you to be encouraged during a time of trouble. And he knows that we can get hurt during a time of trouble, so he speaks a word of consolation. There are times when the fight is just too hard and we just need to hang up our hat and just lay down and go to God in prayer and say, Lord, console me. I don't know where else to go. Only you have the answers that I seek, the psalmist says. And there are those times where you can testify, along with me, where we just go to God 
and say, I'm, my hands are up. I surrender. I need your help. I'm so frustrated. I'm so angry. I'm so sad. Fill in the blank. But God is there for our building up and to encourage us and to consolate us. And also during times of trouble, I need to hear the ways in which God speaks. We need to hear the ways in which, in which God speaks. And, and, and God speaks in so many different ways, and we're not going to cover all the different ways. I mean, he speaks through his word. He speaks to us in his creation. He speaks to us through himself in prayer. There are all different kinds of ways, but we're going to cover just a few of those ways. During times of trouble, God, one of the ways that God speaks to us is primarily through the Bible. Primarily through the Bible. The Bible is trustworthy. The Bible is God's word given to us. Somebody said it like this, that the Bible is God's love letter to us. It is a book of instruction. 66 books, all compiled together, spanning over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, all woven together, saying the same thing. Come to me, worship me, have a relationship with me. The Bible is there to give us truth, to give us hope, to show us God's love. In fact, the Bible says in Psalm 119, one, verse 130, it says, The unfolding of your words gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple. And that's a good word for me because I'm not, I'm not that smart. And God gives me the, the understanding that I need. The unfolding of your words gives life. It imparts understanding to the, even the simple. God is, is easy to understand when, when we know that he loves us, he cares for us, it is his desire to see us grow in him. And so during times of trouble, God speaks to us through his Bible. Hebrews 4.12 says this, For the word of God, the word of God, this, the word of God is living and it's active. It's not stagnant. It's not just sitting there. It may be sitting on your shelf, but his, his word says that when his word goes out, it will do what it is purposed to accomplish. It is living. So the Bible says, for the word of God is living. It is active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul and spirit of the joints and marrow and discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. God has your number. God has my number. God has our number. He knows what we're thinking. He knows the thoughts of our hearts. He knows everything about us. And the Word of God, when we look at the Word of God, we see that which is right in our lives and that which is wrong in our lives. When we look at the Word of God, we see the way that God is showing to us to improve. The Bible says the, that the Word, the Bible, is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. You can look at this. If you had one of those old-timey lanterns that, that ran off of oil, and it's dark at night, and you're going down a path, those lamps don't give out much light. And God likens that verse to that lamp. And we look at that lamp, the only thing that we can see in front of us is the very next step. We can't see all the way down the path, not clearly, but he offers a light unto our feet, taking step by step in faith with God. And his word does that for us. As we continually seek him out and we grow that relationship with him, especially during a time of trouble, what we begin to see is the unfolding of God's word in our lives, and we begin to bloom the way that we're supposed to. The Bible says that we should be like trees planted with our roots stuck in the ground. The one thing that helps us do that is the word of God.
This is trustworthy. Trustworthy. We can trust this word. And so during times of trouble, one of the ways that God speaks to us is his Bible. During times of trouble, God speaks to us also, not only through the word, but through prayer. How does that happen? How does that happen? Simply like this. Conversation. Talking with God is a two-way street. It's you and him. We talk with God and we listen. He's a person, isn't he? Now, he's not created. He is the creator. He is perfect in all of his ways. And he's a person. And he's a person that craves relationships. And he desires to have a relationship with you. Sometimes we think about prayer and we think, I, I just, I don't have time for that. Or, Is he going to listen to me? He certainly, he's, I've, I've heard this, that he's too busy for me. No, God is sovereign. He's totally in control, has his eye on everything. If he's got his eye on the sparrow, which the word says, which the word is trustworthy, trustworthy he's got his eye on you. And he loves to be able to build that relationship with us. And so one of those ways is to not only read his word daily, that's one of the ways that he speaks to us. We get in his word, we read it. But the other way is to pray. Have conversation with him. Talking and listening as he talks. And we're not monopolizing our time with him. You know, sometimes you get into a so-called conversation with people and they monopolize the whole conversation. You ever been in one of these conversations where you're talking with somebody and before you get out everything that you've planned to say, you can see the person's face where the wheels are spinning, the smoke's coming out of their ears. They're already planning on what to say next. And they don't even know what you're about to say, but they're already planning. They're monopolizing the conversation. They're monopolizing. We don't want to do that with God. Can you imagine having a conversation with God where all you do is talk? And you don't sit there and wait and listen. You just say, in Jesus' name, amen, and you're off to the races. You're off to life doing whatever you need to do. Prayer is a way to communicate with God because God is speaking to you. I don't believe in this thought that uh, God doesn't speak anymore. Yes, he does. He's alive. He rose from the grave. He's alive. And so he speaks. Mark 1.35 says this. And this is what they wrote about Jesus. He says, And rising very early in the morning while it was still dark, Jesus departed and went out to a desolate, desolate place, and there he prayed. Now, seriously, do you think that the Father is not going to talk to the Son? Of course he's going to talk to the Son. Why? Because there's a Father-Son relationship there. The Father is speaking to the Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is speaking to the Father. They are in a relationship together. Now, when it comes to us... Listen carefully, since the Bible says that we are joint heirs with Christ, that we get what Christ gets. Since we are joint heirs with Christ, and the Bible calls Jesus our brother, that makes us family. So is God just going to cut off the relationship as far as speaking and listening to us and just leave it specific? to his son and the Holy Spirit? No, he's not going to stop right there. What he does when we come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, part of the privilege is for God to speak to us and we get to speak to him. We are part of the family. So the father is going to speak to, to his own. Jesus is going to speak to his own. 
the Holy Spirit is going to speak to his own. That's us. That's you. That's me. Jeremiah 33, verse 3 says this. Call to me. Call to me and I will answer you. I will answer you and, and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. How many times have we not been blessed because we didn't stick around in our prayer closet and wait for God? How many churches have missed out on God's blessing when the church didn't come together and didn't pray and didn't wait around for the word of the Lord? How many times? How many great and wonderful things and hidden things could happen if we would just wait. God, I tarry for you. I wait. I wait for you. You are a person. And I love to hear your voice. So, during times of trouble, of course, God speaks to us through the Bible, and he speaks to us through prayer. And during times of trouble, God speaks to us also through people. And this is one of the ones that people don't like. <laughs> like I said, when truth comes to you from somebody else, very often, if it's a truth that means there's room for improvement in my life, I don't like hearing about it. <clears throat> it's nice to hear that their character needs improvement. But God speaks to us through people. And he speaks to us through people during times of trouble. The word says, the Bible says that God speaks to us through prophets, through evangelists, through teachers, through apostles, <clears throat> through pastors, and God speaks to us through you and through me. If you belong to Christ, those of us who belong to Christ are those of us through whom God speaks. He speaks through us. Bible says in Romans, how then will they call on him in who they have not believed? And how are they to believe in God of whom they've never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the of those who preach the good news. Now the good news is the gospel. We'll get into that a little bit later. But Preach the good news. That's God's word. And God's word is being preached through a person. These verses of scripture are letting us know that. And so it is God using his word to speak a truth through people. God speaks to us through people. Job 33, 14. For God speaks in one way and in two. Though man does not perceive it. How many times has the man or woman of God wanted to take you as a and say, let me speak truth in your life, but you didn't have time for that? How many times have you tried to speak truth or grace or love or all three of those things into somebody's life? And that person did not perceive it. See, God is using his people to speak his truth, to speak his word. Oh, he couldn't use me. Absolutely he can. If God couldn't use you, the moment that you would get saved, he'd take you right up to heaven. But that didn't happen. You were planted here right now for this purpose, for a time such as this. This is not trying to build up your ego because your ego has nothing to do with this. This is God's favor on God's people during a time of trouble. And his will always matches what the Bible says. And his will is always going to be able to bring life. Eventually, Romans 8.28. For all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. You are called according to God's purpose. You were called according to God's purpose, even during a time of trouble. So God speaks, and he speaks through his Bible, he speaks through prayer to us, and he speaks through you and me.
Now, during times of trouble, God also speaks to us through his presence. And we need to hear this. Some of you are weary and worn out. During this time of trouble, it is just flat out just flattened you. It is stretched you out till there's no more stretching to do. Hebrews 1, verses 1 and 2 says this, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he, Jesus, created. The world. God has spoken to us through Jesus. And Jesus shows up on the scene, people get healed. When Jesus shows up on the scene, people get saved. When Jesus shows up on the scene, there's personal revival that happens. When Jesus shows up on the scene, sin begins to drop. When the love of Christ comes over people, forgiveness starts to happen. When Jesus and his presence is there, amazing things happen. Amazing things happen. Psalm 1611 says this, You, O God, make known to me the path of life. In your presence, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Forevermore. God doesn't just say this life, but he says in eternity. But in your presence, there is fullness of joy. Notice, it doesn't say in your presence is fullness of joy if everything is going okay. Notice, it doesn't say in your presence, there is fullness of joy as long as things aren't happening. No. In your presence, there is fullness of joy, and that transcends. It goes above and beyond any kind of circumstance, any kind of emotion, anything else, because joy is the joy of the Lord is built on a person, not a feeling. The joy of the Lord is built upon a person, the Lord Jesus Christ, not on a feeling. When I know, as we learned two weeks ago, when I know that God is in control, when I know that he loves me, when I know that he's granted me mercy, when I know that he is grace on my life, and I know that because the word is true and he can't lie, when I know these things, no matter what's going on around me, in a time of trouble, I have fullness of joy. Who he is, not because of our circumstances. And I can hear the amen shouting from here. That is a truth. That is a truth of the word. And I tell you what, during a time of trouble, that fullness of joy, it can bubble up. But have faith that God is there, that he is working out all things together for our good during a time of trouble. Exodus thirty three fourteen said, and he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. That's not only a covenantal promise for the Old Testament, but once you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, once you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, he follows with you. Like I said before, the Holy Spirit himself takes residence in us. He is also called the paraclete, which means in Greek that he is right next to us. Jesus said, if two or three are gathered in my name, there he is in the midst of them. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Psalm 145 18 says, the Lord is near, near to all who call on him and to all who call on him in truth. Make sure your motivations are right in truth. But his presence is there. I believe it was Leonard Ravenhill that got into a, a position of worship with God by himself. And he, he ended up feeling the presence of God in such a way that 
the presence of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God was so thick in that room, he laid down and felt like it was just pressing on him. And he said the love of God was so much for him. He couldn't even speak. The presence of the Lord. How many times have you taken time out with God and you have known his sweet presence when there, you couldn't even utter a word out? When a tear or tears would stream down your face and you just knew that the Lord was there in the midst of a troubling time and you knew because he was whispering to you it's going to be okay we are going to get through this I have things for you to do and his presence was there that's almost unexplainable for those of us that know Christ we know it wasn't just a feeling it was a he was the person that showed up on the scene in the midst of trouble. We practice his presence. We practice his presence. And he speaks to us through presence, through his presence. He gives us a word of grace. He gives us a word of comfort. The Holy Spirit is known as the comforter. The Holy Spirit is known as the counselor. He shows us a better way. And so the Lord is near to all who call on him all those who call on him in truth. So God's presence is amazing. See, that's another reason, one more reason for us to get alone with God on a daily basis. Jesus, I seek your face before I seek your hand. I seek you before I seek things. Nothing wrong with seeking things as long as they're in his will, but I seek you out. Because I want your presence. When we practice the presence of God, listen carefully, when we practice the presence of God, we are literally practicing for heaven. That's a truth that we need today. We need that today in a time of trouble. During times of trouble, also God speaks to us personally. God speaks to us personally. Hebrews 3, 7 says this, Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, his voice, Ezekiel 2, 2 says this, And as he spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. Matthew chapter 10, verses 19 through 20 says, When they deliver you over, do not be anxious on how you are to speak, or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father is speaking through you. John 14, 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. It sounds like to me in the Word, in the Old Testament and in the New, that the Holy Spirit, that God himself, speaks to us personally. It's not just the preacher who's speaking the words of God. He speaks to you personally. That also denotes relationship. He speaks to us personally. He lets us know with that still, small voice. He speaks to us. He speaks to our soul. He speaks to us to let us know what his thoughts are. He speaks to us personally. What happens, though, when we know that God speaks to us, but what happens, though, when we struggle with what God says and we don't actually do what God says? I mean, we've got all this proof that he speaks to us. You know, he speaks to us through his word. He speaks to us through circumstances. He speaks to us through people. He speaks to us personally. But sometimes, even that much speaking that's going on, when we hear him in prayer, when we hear him in the word, what happens when we still do what he says? Because we're not perfect. Like I said before, we are expert at Experts at sinning. So what happens then? 
God knows that we're weak. God knows that we struggle. God knows that as his children, we're going to sin and we're going to make mistakes. But in the midst of that time, when we do fall, we need to know that God will pick us up. And he offers so many different things to us as far as helping us to be strengthened after the fall. But what happens during the fall? The Bible says this in 1 John 1, 9, and this is a verse that I love to echo again and again. It says, if we confess our sins, if we just come clean with God and we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And this is a daily thing. It's a daily thing. But in that, in that promise, we see that God has grace and mercy towards us. He understands where we're at. Is it an excuse to sin? Should we, as Paul says, keep on sinning that grace may abound? Absolutely not. You say, well, God understands I'm going to, I'm going to sin anyway, and, and he's got favor and grace on me, and he's going to forgive me, and I understand that. Look, if we have that kind of capricious attitude about God, we really need to relook at our, at our life with God. Because, again, this is a relationship. I mean, would you actually do that against people that you can see? No, we don't want to do that. What we want to do is keep that relationship fresh. And when we do fail with God and we're not doing what he says, we need to immediately come clean, confess our sin, and we need to count on God and know that he is, he is faithful. Not our emotions. He is faithful and just to forgive our sins. It is his nature to be forgiving. It is his nature to clean us from all unrighteousness. Ravi Zacharias, who's a speaker, he has a story about God speaking to an interpreter, and I want to share that story with you. In 1971, Ravi Zacharias, he was a young man, and he was preaching in, in Vietnam, with his interpreter, and his interpreter's name was Hen Fong. And they traveled the whole country speaking. And, he, and Robbie would speak, and the interpreter, Hen, would interpret for him. Well, it got time to leave, and, and so Robbie took off and figured he probably wouldn't see him again. But in 1988, Hen called Robbie at 11 p.m. at night. And he asked if, if Robbie had some time, and Robbie did, and he gave him some time. And, and he began to tell him a story, and he said, after Vietnam fell, the Viet Cong arrested him as someone who worked for the CIA because he was an interpreter. They figured that because he's an interpreter, he has to work for the CIA. And he's like, no, 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 I, I, I was a teenager. I still interpreted, but I was a teenager at the time. They went ahead and imprisoned him anyway. They ended up giving him Marxist materials, and they could they only gave him stuff to read in French and Vietnamese. They didn't give him anything English and anything in Christian or anything anything Christian. And he was in jail. He's being beaten. He's being made to do tasks he'd rather not. And he got weary after all these beatings. He's going through a time of trouble. He got weary and he said, you know, I'm done with God. Tomorrow when I wake up, no more God, no more prayer. I'm just, I'm done with it. He wakes up the next morning and he went in to clean the, the latrine. And when he went in there, he had a, 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 a face mask on and, and he's cleaning everything and he's cleaning up the human excrement and he's He's, he's cleaning up the, the tin pot that all the, the, the human excrement is in, and he's cleaning up all the used toilet paper. It's just a horrible job. But as he's cleaning, he finds 
a little piece of paper that he thinks has English written on it. And so he takes that piece of paper, he cleans it off, and he puts it into his back pocket. And then later on that night, he takes out of his back pocket and he reads it. And what does he read? It says Romans chapter 8. And if you've been a Christian for a length of time, you know that Romans chapter 8 is, has been called the jewel of the New Testament. And in Romans 8, it's got a specific verse called Romans 8.28, for we know that all things happen for good for those who are called according to God's purpose. It's also got a verse in there that says, who shall separate us from the love of God? And Hen said, in that moment, he said, Jesus, you wouldn't even leave me alone for one day. Because just the day before, he said, I'm done with you. Jesus knocked on his door again. Well, after Hen was released from prison, he was trying to escape from Vietnam. And so he and 52 other men built a boat to escape from Vietnam. And four days when, from when he was about to escape, a group of the Viet Cong came up to him and said, are you going to escape? Are you trying to escape? And he lied to him. He said, no. And he, and he said, God, you know, if you want me to escape, I will tell the truth if they come again. And so they came to him again and they said, are you trying to escape? Are you trying to escape? And he said, this time, he said, yes, I am trying to escape. And those four Viet Cong soldiers that came up to him and were asking him, are you trying to escape? They said, good, take us with you. <laughs> they were trying to get away as well. And he said, there I go again, trying to do things my way. But God had a different way. And so they all got in the boat. And during that time they were in the boat, the weather was horrible. And they would have capsized had it not been for those four guards that were with them that were excellent mariners. And they helped guide the boat safely to Taiwan. Later on, years later, Ken was given residence in the United States. He ended up going to Berkeley and getting a degree. And he was getting ready to get married and things were working out. But later on, years later, he visited Ravi Zacharias, and he was sitting with Ravi's kids at the table, and he said this to Ravi's kids. He said, you're always tempted to do it your way. Don't. Do it his way. And he will honor, and he will bless you. God has spoken to you. It God's way. When God has spoken to you through the church, when God has spoken to you through His Word, when God has spoken to you God's way. One of the ways that God speaks to us is that is through the gospel, which is good news. And the good news is is that first off, it's bad news that we are sinners. We have sinned against God. We've done things our way. And because of that, Jesus was nailed to a cross, and he was buried and rose three days later. And that if we call upon him and we ask him to save us, to forgive us, and we turn away from ourselves to him, he will forgive us. And if we believe in him, he will forgive us. And so for those of you that haven't done that, God is speaking to you now. become part of his family. God has spoken through the gospel. God speaks. I would encourage you to listen to him while he's speaking to you. And no doubt he will honor you and he will bless you. The bread represents the body of Christ that was broken for us on the cross. And the juice represents the blood that he shed for us on the cross. And that when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have a relationship with him. And that's a one-time thing. But we do this in remembrance of what he did for us on the cross. 
So the Bible says to do this in remembrance of him. Take and eat. And this is why we do this in remembrance of him. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate it. We love you. Next week, we're going to continue on with our Rock Solid series called Absorb When I Absorb What God is Teaching Me. When I absorb those lessons from God. It'll be a good time to get together and, and figure out how it is that we absorb the things of God and how God teaches us through that. Well, we ask that you... Uh, Join us on Thursday for the National Day of Prayer. Come on out at 7 p.m. if you can. And otherwise, have a blessed week. Seek God and do His will.